What is going on, Governor Shiskel here, and today we're going to review the very fastest cavalry commanders and builds in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. You must be here because you want to go super fast. We're going to review the literal fastest in the game that you can go with cavalry and Rise of Kingdoms. Now, if you like guides where we help you get the most out of your commanders, then please do like and subscribe. We make daily videos about Rise of Kingdoms, and we're going to be covering the heck out of the upcoming Ark of Osiris Season 2 Finals. You're not going to want to miss that. We will be streaming and playing. All right, so let's get into the fastest commander combos and builds in Rise of Kingdoms. Before we talk about those specific commanders and builds, though, maybe even we should talk about why you want to go so fast. There's a couple reasons why you need speed. The first is if you're rocking the Mighty Governor and you're trying to just kill a bunch of people that are farming to get huge points. That is one reason why you want to go fast so you can't get caught. Being able to avoid getting caught out of position in Rise of Kingdoms is game-changing. Another reason why you might want a lot of speed, as I mentioned with Arc League a moment ago, is that speed is really, really helpful in getting to structures and crossing the map in a game mode like Arc of Osiris. Card up in the top if you haven't seen Arc of Osiris and Arc of Osiris League. Now, one last reason that you might want a lot of speed in Rise of Kingdoms is just to go get an objective that's kind of far away. Usually that objective is going to be grabbing a rune that's on the map or putting one troop into a flag that's being built. Uh, the reason you do that is to get a bunch of alliance currency. Everybody builds it with one troop and you want to typically build those flags in your alliance in order to get strategic, you know, physical positions on the map. To get far away for that, you know, you're you're talking about a long way to go. Some fast-moving cavalry commanders are really solid. So those are some pretty compelling reasons to move quickly. Your troops can't die if they can't get caught. And so let's talk about the pairings that go super fast. The thing that you need to go as fast as possible in Rise of Kingdoms is the mobility tree. The mobility tree is exceptional for crazy, crazy march speed. And we're gonna show you a couple combos that are just totally gangbuster. The commanders that have the mobility tree that you could consider using as a primary commander include Tao Tao with cavalry mobility and peacekeeping. It includes Belisarius, who's got the exact same set of trees. It includes Dragon Lancer, who's got cavalry and mobility, and last and least <laughs> is Lancelot with cavalry and mobility as well. Now, the reason I say he's last and least has to do with the amount of march speed that certain commanders bring to the table with their skills. This is important to be looking at as well. Cao Cao is going to bring 10% march speed if you can max the third skill. Minamoto brings 10% march speed if you can max the second skill. Genghis Khan, however, brings a solid 15% march speed as long as you're out of combat. You get a negative 10% march speed, however, if you are in combat. So you lose the 15% bonus and you drop a further 10%. So you're losing a lot of march speed when Khan gets caught out of position. A commander that doesn't have that downside is Attila, who brings 15% march speed when you max the third skill. Now, if legendaries aren't for you, and gosh darn it, for the free-to-play players out there and the folks who are not spending tons of money, you've got other options that have a lot of march speed, and they're super easy to obtain and almost as fast, which is very encouraging. Uh, the first commander I'll mention is Dragon Lancer with a solid 10% march speed, slaying it with that speed, and also Lancelot, who rocks 5% march speed. Now, unfortunately, the two epic commanders that are really good for going fast, but don't have inherent march speed, are Bybars and also Belisarius. They gain march speed when they leave combat, which is really cool, but when you're getting to where you're trying to go, they're not going to do anything for you. So if you're grabbing a rune far away, like, okay, Belisarius as a primary is good for the talents, and we'll get into those as a mo in a moment, but the skills aren't going to do anything for you. So let's dive right into 
Some of the talents that you might choose will give you a couple builds uh, and talk about the total march speed that you can gain. So if you wanted to have the absolute max march speed, you'd be using a commander like a Tau Tau primary and either Khan or Attila secondary because the combination of those gives you a total of 25% march speed from skills. Now, if you were using other uh, non-legendary commanders, the max march speed you could get from skills would be 15% using Dragon Lancer as a primary and Lancelot as the secondary. So if we cruise on in to the talents now, finally the talents, here is the literal fastest march speed build in Rise of Kingdoms. This build does work. I use this literally every day to run around, get objectives, and to slay stuff. Okay, so maybe I'm not slaying stuff every day with this build, but card up in the top if you want to see some crazy Mighty Governor shenanigans where we're using this commander with this build. Uh, this is the fastest you can possibly go. We did find sort of one other variant that is a little bit slower, but just by 1%. Uh, you're getting 52% march speed with this build. The one thing that's a little risky is time management. This gives you 10% march speed when you're out of combat. However, you lose 10% march speed if you are in combat. So uh, a 20% march speed swing from when you're out of combat to when you're in combat. So you're going to want to use this if you're avoiding getting hit at all. Now, one other thing worth mentioning is that Hasty Departure is not going to give you inherent march speed. However, if you're managing your march very closely, going from structures or going from resource nodes, this is going to give you, I guess I'll point a little, little uh, like over here, this is going to give you a lot of speed, 60% for 10 seconds when you leave the structure, which includes your own city, by the way. Now, the alternate speed build, which doesn't come with this downside, looks like this. We shave off a whole bunch of what we had in the mobility tree and instead reinvest that into the cavalry uh, tree, getting three per or I guess 6% march speed over here and 3% march speed over here. This is a pretty solid build. There's a couple things that you're missing. Uh, you're missing the ability to resist slow effects. You're missing a speed boost when you defeat a march. So this build that we've got here is maybe something you would use if you are really trying to avoid getting pulled into combat, but not if it's the literal fastest build that you want in the game. That should be this one over here. So you have a solid alternative. It's only 1% slower. You get a total of 52% total march speed over here, 51% total march speed over here, which means if you're using... Tao Tao with Khan or Attila, you're getting 77 or 76% extra march speed depending on the build that you've chosen. Now, the reason that we think the cavalry tree is so important, by the way, is that you also get charge. Charge is only going to be effective when your march has been beaten down. Uh, when you get below 50%, you're going to go 30% faster, which is really solid. Uh, there's basically a, a sort of threshold that you cross when you're killing, you know, farming units in Mighty Governor, where when you get below 50% and you get these charge talents, you're basically uncatchable. It's totally nuts. Very hard to deal with. Um, yeah, charge is very, very good. In addition to all the march speed that you're getting from that cavalry tree. So that is what I would be looking at if you've got a Tao Tao primary, but great news. If you're in the free to play realm and you don't have Tao Tao as a primary, either because they're not leveled in startup or because you don't have the sculptures to invest, you could use Dragon Lancer as a primary. I use Dragon Lancer primary with Lancelot secondary all the time to go get runes, literally all the time. So if you're using Dragon Lancer as a primary, here's a build that I would recommend. We're missing a couple talent points here uh, to wrap up. We need this extra 6% of March speed over here. We don't have it yet, uh, but if we leveled up this commander a little further, we could get that pretty easily. If you're rocking this build, you're going to get a solid 43% uh, march speed, which is not quite as much as the 51 or 52% march speed you were getting with the talent trees that we were showing you earlier, peacekeeping, mobility, and cavalry. It's not quite as much, but it's still pretty gosh darn good. Um, you're 
total march speed. If you had a uh, Dragon Lancer with either Khan or Attila as the secondary, would be 68% compared to the 77% that you could get with Cao Cao and Khan Attila. Uh, that's pretty good. You're only uh, 9% slower. Not so bad. If you're using Dragon Lancer with a Cao Cao or Minamoto secondary, you're going to have a total of 63% maximum march speed. Still solid. Uh, and if you're using your Dragon Lancer with Lancelot, that's 58% total march speed. Um, it is less than 77%, but only by like 19%. So it's pretty solid in terms of free-to-play march speed awesomeness. Now, there is... One other pairing that we need to get a look at that's actually kind of better than that route we were just showing, uh, the sort of uh, Lancelot and uh, Dragon Lancer route. If you use your Belisarius primary, you can have all the same talent trees that you had as a Cao Cao primary. And that gets pretty interesting. If you're using Belisarius and Khan or Attila, that's 15% march speed from skills and 52 or 51% march speed from talents. That gives you a total of 67% march speed. And if you're using Belisarius with Cao Cao and, or, or Minamoto or uh, Lancelot, or Dragon Lancer, rather, as the secondary, you can get 62% march speed, which is still really solid. So you've got a lot of options here, and we'll throw all those into a table and put that on the screen so you can compare... Uh, using the builds that we've talked about, using these combos we've been talking about, you've got some really good choices. Now, there is one other thing, maybe two technically, that you can do to get a little bit more march speed out of the deal, and that has to do with equipment. If you go into Ye Old Blacksmith, Windswept Bracers are going to give you a solid 3% march speed. In addition, the Windswept Boots give you a solid 3% march speed. So that's 6% extra speed on top of what you had, uh, which is really quite exceptional. And honestly, we are going to be crafting a lot of these Bracers and Boots for Arc League because I think the march speed is just too good to pass up on, especially because this gear works on both cavalry and infantry and, and really any troop type if you wanted. However, there are other stats there for cavalry and infantry. So I'd be curious to hear if you're using these pairings or which of these builds you prefer. Um, if you really wanted a little bit of extra march speed on top, some of this you have control over, some of it you don't, uh, you could go and get a rune. March speed runes do help and are very powerful. You could also get a kingdom title. You could get the justice. <laughs> That'll give you some extra march speed, but only one person in the kingdom can have it. And maybe there's a few other things. Are there other things that could give you march speed? I guess there are holy sites that give march speed. That's pretty important. Uh, in KVK, there are holy sites that give march speed. In your own kingdom, there's a holy site that'll hook you up with a solid 5% march speed. Let's see what the exact name of that is. It is the Sanctum of Wind, because you move like the wind, naturally. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you learned anything about March Speed, please do like and subscribe. That's your way of giving me a virtual high five, a thank you for the information. Uh, and if I did some of the math wrong or there's something that you think is better, let me know. I certainly would be eager to know what that is, especially going into my league match tomorrow. Stick around, like, and subscribe if you want to see all of the Arc League Season 2 stuff. We're going to start covering matches as we get into the finals and toward the, the big show. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.